One of the architects of the field of behavioral economics, Richard Thaler's first book, Nudge, distilled just how fallible people are and how to channel their behavior. His next book, Misbehaving, takes the reader through his backstory and how he fell into the field. Though you are not a macroeconomic expert, how would you apply behavioral economics to what's happening in the Eurozone right now, particularly around Greece? First thing is, it's a little difficult to understand what the EU and Greece were doing in their various rounds of negotiations. And it reminds me of one classic experiment in behavioral economics involving something called the ultimatum game. And the way this game works is, suppose the experimenter gives you 100 pounds and says, you can divide that money among us. And the rules of the game are, you make me an offer, I say yes or no, and if I say yes, that's the deal, and if I say no, we both get nothing. Now, the standard economic theory says, you should offer me one pound out of the hundred, and I should take it because one pound is more than nothing. But if we actually play this game, and you offer me less than about 20%, I'm gonna say no. You, and so you offer me 10 pounds, and I say no, or something even less polite, and then we both walk away with nothing. Now, notice, you know, an economist says, well, offer one pound because he's gonna accept it. And it may not be a coincidence that the former Greek finance minister was a game theorist. I'm not sure who was in charge of these negotiations, but both sides look to me to be playing a game something like that and thinking they could offer the other side as little as possible. So a war of attrition. Yeah, and my impression is that where they ended up was worse than many of the previous places they could have been. And what we also saw with you know this whole Greek saga was a lot of those finance minister meetings over the last few weeks seemed to me, frankly, to be sort of a PR stunt. You had a lot of hugging, but from the get-go, we all knew that you know Greece would never be able to pay off that mountain of debt. I think there is some reluctance on both sides to just concede that the Greek situation is hopeless in the sense that there's no way they can possibly repay all of their debts. So, all right, if we accept that, where do we go? People who own Greek debt are not going to get more of their money back by uh, ruining the Greek economy even further. We just had the referendum in Greece, which many people watching the situation said has actually made the public even more divisive than ever before. Do you think an opt-in, opt-out scheme was really the way to go? I'm not sure what the point of that referendum was. There was an interesting point of what we call choice architecture employed by the Greek government, which was the in the ballot, which, should we accept the offer from the EU, yes or no, no was listed first and yes was listed second. And that is kind of a nudge from the government uh, as to which way they were asking people to vote. And, um, you know, I think that ballots should be as neutral as possible. So let's take the Greek example, apply it to how it's influencing the UK, right? You're known for libertarian paternalism. Do you think that the events in Greece have in any way informed the public's judgment on its membership in the EU. Well, it's, it's interesting that you use the word informed. I would say for sure the events of the last few months are going to have a big influence on a referendum if, uh, when it's held in the, in the UK about whether to remain in the EU. And I would say probably an undue influence. Lots of evidence in psychology suggests that Recent events, salient events, have way more weight on our decisions than they should. What should we be thinking about? We should be thinking about the experience since the creation of the Eurozone and deciding is it a good idea or a bad idea to join or to be a member. One thing for sure is that the UK looks good in their decision not to adopt the Euro. Whether they still want to be a member of that club is not something about which I have a professional opinion, but uh, for sure voters will be heavily influenced by what has happened and 
what's going to continue to happen because this story isn't over.